This video is to show you how to use the Canvas Conferences option in your course. First, we want to make sure the Conferences link is available in your left side navigation of the course. To do that, click Settings on the left side. You will see tabs at the top and you will need to click the Navigation tab. Once you click that, the items at the top of your navigation tab are the items that you have allowed the students access to. They will not always show for the students. It just depends on if you have content in that link. You can see it by looking on the left side. If you see the eye with the line through it, that means the students don't have that option because either you did not post in that link yet or you have hidden it from them. The items that are at the bottom of this list are items that are hidden. You will need to find the conferences link in that list, hold, click and hold, and drag it to the top wherever you would like. The order you have it at the top is the order that the students will see it on their left side navigation. Once you have this in whatever order you would like, Scroll down and hit save. You now see that you have conferences allowed for the students on the left side navigation in your course. So let's go ahead and click our conferences tab. You can see that I have previously done two conferences in my sandbox course. To start a new conference, you're going to click the plus conference button. The name that you list here is the name that the students will see whenever you create this conference and they are invited to the conference. Um, I would suggest maybe putting the date and maybe the time. So maybe we want to do 11 a.m. Any other information that you need here as well. So if it was a Q&A session, you may want to put dash Q&A. Um, or if it was online office hours, you may not want to list that. Or if it was an instructional class or lecture period, you would list that. For the type, you would click big blue button. It's just going to stay that. That's the only option. I don't click or list or change any of the number of minutes. And that is because I choose the no time limit option. Sometimes, not Often, but sometimes my recordings and my conferences do go over an hour, just depending on how many students are in the session and um, how many questions they're asking. So I don't want to be limited by that 60 minutes. The other option I click is to enable recording. We want to be able to record this for those students that may not be able to come at the time that you hold this conference. You have the option to add a description. Just know that this description will not show up in the email to the students. The only thing the students get in the email is whatever you have put here for the name of your conference. If we continue, it automatically checks invite all course members, and I usually leave it at that. You can remove all course observers. Those would be, for example, um, people that have been added to your course that are just observing the other student's progress. For example, um, in athletics, we have our academic athletic counselors that have been added to the courses to just monitor the athlete's progress in your course. If you don't want them to get an email, you could check that button. I usually leave it unchecked because I don't really care. Okay, and then we're going to hit update. And you will see that a, a conference has been created. This can stay like this until you are ready to actually start your conference. So I usually do this setup either first thing in the morning or the day before. But as soon as you hit update and this is created, the students will get an email. So it just depends on when you want them to get that email. You may want them to know in advance and then send a reminder, or you may want to know if it was truly an online class or something you're doing consistently. You may want to send it, you know, an hour before or two hours before so they, they know, hey, this is coming up. That's completely up to you, okay? All right, so let's show you what it looks like to start a conference. If we start the conference, it will open a new tab. 
And this goes into a um, software called Big Blue Button. It's going to ask you to add your microphone. So you're going to click microphone and you should definitely do this. And it will make sure that you want to add it. So you will need to allow access to your microphone by clicking allow. And then you have the option to do an echo test, which is basically just making sure your audio your is audio working. working. So you so talk, you talk and, and as long as you can hear yourself, you're good. you're good. You're good. So click yes. You are currently the only person in this conference. All right, so this is the interface that you have for the Canvas conferences. Um, a couple things here. Your students will show up on the left-hand side under users. So as they're coming in, it will say so-and-so join the conference. It will also say if you're the only one in the conference. Um, so if somebody joins and then leaves, it will say you're the only one in the conference. The chat option is usually what I use um, to communicate with the students unless they're comfortable doing their own video and audio. So some students are totally fine just asking me questions. If I get a lot of students, sometimes they forget to turn their audio off. And so you do have the option over here um, under the usernames to mute that student. Um, you know, you just never know. Uh, so you can use either option. I will say that as a lot of students are in the conference, sometimes it is easier to just do the chat, but you can, you'll just have to experiment and see what works best for you, okay? Let me show you some other options here. You have the option down on the right-hand side to share your screen. If you have um, like a tablet or a Surface or Surface Pro or Surface Book, or anything that you can write on, that would be your best option because then you can write out problems or write out whatever you need. You also have the option to add a webcam. So if you want them to see you or you want to be able to um, maybe use a whiteboard behind you, make sure that you have, you know, that you can actually see the quality is good. They can actually see what you're doing, but you could add that webcam from your computer itself. And lastly, you can add a webcam as a document camera. And I've done this often in the past where I would have a document camera connected to my computer. Your computer will recognize it as a webcam and then you're able to use that document camera within the system. So if we use um, the document camera, you can actually click this minimize button here and it will show everything, um, basically your camera full screen. So the students can see that, okay? So you have some options here depending on how you want to present. You also have options um, by just clicking the next slide. This gives you a blank whiteboard for you to write on if you wanted to. Uh, it's not pretty. And so you do have some options over here if you wanted to um, write. Okay, it just depends on, it's not a great option. If you have other programs, it might be easier to do like the screen share, okay? So it just depends on what you wanna do. Gonna clear all that out. And you can see on this um, plus sign here, you get some a, a couple different options if you wanted them. You could create a poll, so like if you wanted everybody to respond to something, you could do that. You could upload a presentation. So if you had developed, let's say a PowerPoint or a PDF that you want the students to see and then you write on it or just talk about it, you could do that. And then you could also share an external video like from YouTube or something like that. So you do have those options as well. The most important thing that I make sure that I do every single time that I do a conference is record the conference. So once I get everything situated, I wait till everybody's there and I get started, you're going to hit start recording here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. It says, do you wanna record? Yes. Okay, so this is gonna start your recording in your course. Everything from that moment on will be recorded for your students that may not be able to come to your actual conference. So those students um, that for whatever reason cannot attend can actually go into Canvas and view the presentation later. And then I can show you that after we're finished with this. 
on where they would go to do that. The unfortunate thing about this is when you use this recording option, you only have the option to save it in Canvas for two weeks. You don't choose that, Canvas chooses that. So it's only going to save this recording for two weeks. Because of that, um, there are many instructors, including myself, that use this, but then also add a screen recording um, option on top of this. So I'm currently recording this using um, a screen share option and a screen record option. There's also OBS Studio, OBS Studio that you can rec um, download and it will also record and it's completely free. Okay, so, and I'm using ice cream recorder, but um, that does cost, but e either way, either, either one of those does the same thing. That option, recording it in the screen share while you're also recording it in Canvas, allows you to have a downloaded version of your conference that you will have forever until you decide to delete it. So if a student, let's say three weeks from now says, I, I don't, I need help with this particular problem for the test, or I missed what you said on this, then you can then turn around and send them or link them to that information instead of it being deleted out of Canvas after, after two weeks, okay? So how do I pause it? Well, sometimes I want to pause the recording because students may ask a question that I just don't think is relevant to the recording or the lecture, or maybe it's more um, personal content or, um, you know, a specific question that's not really relative, then I want to be able to pause the recording. So if you click the record option again, it will say, are you sure you want to pause? And you can click yes. Okay. And then you would just click this again to resume the recording. So after you finish answering, you would click that and you'd be starting the recording back. I also use this if I get, like, let's say I get interrupted. Uh, many of y'all know that lots of people knock on my door. So if I get interrupted, I will pause the recording, answer whatever question, and then start the recording back. Okay. All right. So let's say you're finished and you want to end the recording. You're going to click this again and it will end the recording. However, this has not ended the session. So you can still finish up talking to individual students. Oftentimes, if students have individual questions, um, I will stop the recording and just answer the questions, um, you know, so that students that are watching this later don't have to hear all of that, depending on what the content is. Okay. Now, how do we get out of this? So if you click the three dots up at the top, you have an option to, you have some options here, but mainly you're going to end meeting. And it says, do you want to end the session? And you say yes. And it's always going to come up here, honestly, after a few times you get tired of doing this. So I just click OK. And it takes you back to your course. So here's the thing. Ending the session in big blue button does not end the session in Canvas. One more time. If you click end meeting, and big blue button where we just were, it does not end the session in Canvas. So if I go back to conferences, I'm gonna see that this is still in progress. And it does this for a few different reasons. It's because, let's say for whatever reason, you get into the conference as the instructor and you're, maybe you're, you have to start having technical difficulties or, I've had audio difficulties or even webcam difficulties where it just is not working right for whatever reason and you need to get out. Well, you don't want to have to start a brand new recording just because you left the conference. So sometimes I have to exit and then come back and rejoin and it will allow, it, sometimes that just fixes any issues that I have. Okay, so this is really important. The recording will not be generated in Canvas until you end the conference in Canvas. So you must come back to your conferences and click end. And it will say, are you sure you want to end this? And you say, okay. Once you end the conference, you cannot reopen it. You would just have to create a new one. Depending on the length of your recording, it may take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour 
to actually generate the recording. But once it is generated, you will receive an email saying that it has been generated for the course and the conference that you created. I did this earlier just so you could see. Students can then come back to the conferences tab and they see exactly what you see. So if they wanted to view that recording, they would click on whatever conference it was and there's a small presentation button there. So if I click on presentation, you can see um, that this is the presentation and I'm going to click play. This is just a test showing that you can record these conferences. Mm -hmm. And they will actually see, so if you use webcam or whatever, um, they will actually see exactly what you would normally see in the conference. They just can't interact because it's a recording. Okay. So that is how you would tell a student to get to it. Again, after two weeks, this presentation option goes away. So you can see this was, I mean, this was last year, but it did not keep anything that I recorded. You do also have the option to delete. So let's just say something was a mess <laughs> or didn't go right. You can come in here and delete it and try again. But once you delete it, you can't recover it. So just be careful with that. I do usually leave all the links up so that I just have um, record that I have done it. And, um, you know, so you can see what all you've done throughout the semester. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at emily.mccardle at usm.edu, and I will be happy to answer them. But I hope this was just a little helpful for everyone that is using the conference option um, going forward. Thank you.